Hey folks, Mav's Dad here with another watch review. This is actually kind of a special review for me because this is the current model of a watch I picked up about 20 years ago, right after I graduated basic training in the Army. I had my first real paycheck, so I went over to the PX and I saw this thing and I just had to have it. This is the Seiko SNA413 Flight Computer Watch, and what we're going to do is we're going to open it up, take a look at the features and functions, look at the build quality, and then I'll give you my overall impressions of the watch. So let's take a look at this thing. Here's your typical Seiko watch box, a Seiko blue watch box. Nothing exciting there. Here's the watch itself on a Seiko watch pillow. Now with this particular watch, you get two manuals. One is the actual watch manual itself. And then the other is the rotary slide rule manual. Now both of these are printed in multiple different languages. That's why they're a little thick to begin with. But because the slide rule manual teaches you all the different calculations you can perform, it's a lot thicker. And also, like I said, printed in multiple different languages. This thing is a beast. This is a really big manual. So there you go. Also, in every Seiko watch box, I also get this little filler box here. I think this is meant to uh, have some extra links in it. But every Seiko watch I've gotten has never had extra links. I think the dealers take the links out. So if you need to add a link to your bracelet, they sell them to you separately. I think there's a big conspiracy about that. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, there you go. Let's put this back together and let's take a look at the watch. All right, as I said, this is model number SNA413. And uh, what I'll do is on the left-hand side of the screen, I'll actually put the, um, the specifications of the watch, but I'll go ahead and read them off to you now. Uh, you're looking at a 7T62 quartz movement. The case is 42 millimeters. The bracelet is 20 millimeters and it doesn't taper, it's 20 millimeters all the way around the bracelet. You're looking at a Hardlex dome crystal and you can see the dome there. It's actually dome so it can magnify the face of the watch because this printing is so small. Uh, it does have a slide rule function and this uh, bezel is bi-directional meaning it turns both ways. Most dive watches have a unidirectional bezel uh, that only turns counterclockwise. But because of the slide rule function of this watch, it turns both ways so you can line up different numbers and do different calculations. Uh, it does have Seiko's proprietary LumaBright paint on the hands and indices. It is very bright, um, which is really nice. I love that Seiko LumaBright, really good stuff. It's uh, waterproof to 200 meters, which is 660 feet. You feature three screw down crowns. All three of these are screw down crowns. Uh, it has an alarm function, a 12 hour alarm function. So you can set the alarm to ring any time after the current time, 12 hours in the future. Uh, so you can't do it for like, you know, six o'clock next Thursday. It only does an alarm within the next 12 hours of the current time. Uh, it also has a tachymeter function as well as being obviously a stopwatch uh, or a, um, a uh, chronograph. And one thing I do like about the bezel, it has a coin edge bezel, very easy to grip. It doesn't have any clicking action. It's just kind of like a slide, a slide action, real smooth slide action. Uh, but you can tell it's very well made. Um, the other parts of the face, now the only real drawback about the watch, other than the fact that uh, the printing on it is very small. So if you're a pilot, you're probably not going to buy this watch for the actual slide rule function. You're going to get a Breitling or something like that, or you're just going to get an actual E6B flight computer and actually do all your calculations on an actual computer. The printing on this thing, I mean, you could use it in a pinch, but it's just so small that a pilot would be really hard pressed to do any actual real calculations on this watch. I mean, to me, it's just meant for looks, but you could, it is actually functional. You can use it, but the printing, again, is just so small uh, that a, uh, an actual pilot really just couldn't use this watch. You know, that, that's my opinion. They're going to actually have a flight computer. They're going to do all, your, all their calculations. So looking more again at the face, um, the um, indices are raised. They have a nice little chrome bezel around each indice. Uh, the Seiko logo is an applied chrome logo, which is really nice. I do like that. Uh, the date window is tiny. I mean, it is. you have to hold this thing within about an inch of your face to see what the date is, uh, as well as the actual, all of the, uh, the calculation numbers that are screen printed on. It's just really, really small. Um, those are really the only drawbacks uh, to this watch. I take that back, one more. The hands blend in with the white face of the watch so well that if you were to look at this watch and want to see what the time is very quickly, you're going to be hard pressed to do it. You're going to have to look at this thing for a couple seconds and see what time it is because the hands covered in LumaBright 
and the kind of chrome bezel around each hand, the hour and minute hand, really, really blend in with the face of the watch. Uh, you do have a, um, a sweeping um, second hand for the chronograph function. The actual second hand for the watch is over here at nine o'clock. You can see it ticking off. That's the actual second hand. So let me go ahead and stop this and re reset it. There you go. And what else with the face? Again, you take the slide rule function and you would take the different numbers and line them up with numbers on the inner bezel or chapter ring right there. Uh, I mean, again, you can use it, but it, it's gonna be really hard because the numbers are super small. Um, again, like I said, the, all the crowns are screw down crowns. In order to operate any of the functions of the chronograph, the alarm or anything like that, you have to unscrew these crowns to do so. Uh, the case, I like the case a lot. Uh, it's really, really highly polished. There are really no satin kind of finishes or flat finishes on the case itself. You can see some of those on the bracelet, uh, but the case is, is very highly polished, as are the pushers, uh, the screw downs on the pushers, the bezel, very highly polished. I mean, it's a good looking watch, no doubt. It is a very, very good looking watch. Um, the bracelet, like I said, is 20 millimeters and it does not taper. It's 20 millimeters all the way around. It does not have a dive extension, even though you could take this watch diving because uh, it's rated to uh, 200 meters, which is 660 feet. If you do that, you want to make sure all these pushers are screwed down as well as the main crown because that's going to um, affect the waterproofness of the watch if you leave any of these uh, pushers unscrewed. It's going to affect the integrity of the case. So make sure if you're going to take this thing at the beach or whatever, to go ahead and screw all those down. And if you're gonna be in salt water, make sure you rinse the wash off, rinse the watch off after you get out of the water, because salt water can really uh, can really mess up watches if you're not careful. So there you go. Um, again, you have three different subdials, one at 12, nine, and six. You have your sweeping second hand uh, when the chronograph function is enabled. You have your regular second hand again at nine o'clock. You have your alarm function at six o'clock. And um, I would go over all the different slide rule functions if I knew them, <laughs> but I don't. This watch really, to me, is just a stunner to look at. It's a really, really nice dressy watch. Uh, and that's why I got it way back when, when I didn't know anything about watches. I really didn't know I was buying. I just know that it looked good and I wanted it, so I got it. Now back then, this thing was about, gosh, 300 and some dollars. We're talking about 20 years ago. Again, I'm not sure if this is the exact same model. I'm pretty sure it's not. But it's just a great, great looking watch. I mean, I just love, I love the aesthetic. I mean, you can wear it, you know, swimming, you can wear it to some sort of formal occasion. I mean, it's gonna draw attention. You're gonna get some questions asked for sure. And if that's your intention, this is actually, this is definitely the watch, definitely the watch to get. I'm trying to think of any, um, any specifications I might have forgotten. You have a screw down case back. Uh, the battery in these is good for about 10 years, so they say. Uh, I've gotten, when I've had quartz watches, I normally get about five or six because you're going to be pushing these functions, these, these pushers, you're going to be doing the chronograph, playing with it, messing with the alarm. So that's going to take away a little bit from the battery. So about five or six years on average uh, for one of these. I mean, you might be, you might get seven or eight depending, but uh, that's about the average. So I'm trying to think of anything else. That's about it. I mean, it's a great looking watch. I really, really love, love the way it looks. But so far as functionality and form, not so much. Like I said, my main thing is the fact that the hands blend in so well with the white face of the watch. I mean, it took me, you know, two or three seconds to see what time it was. And that's not something I, if I'm looking at my wrist and I want to see what time it is, I want to know what time it is right then. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to play around with the watch to try to have to figure out what time it is. I want to know what time it is. So that's really my main drawback with this thing. Um, even though that, that domed hard lex crystal does magnify the face, uh, the face is so busy, it just takes you a few seconds to know what you're looking at. Um, but if, you know, if you're used to that or you don't mind doing that, by all means, go out there and get one of these things. It's a stunner, stunner to look at. Very heavy, nice heft to it, uh, nice solid links, uh, typical Seiko clasp. Um, nice looking watch. So if you uh, like this video and you want to subscribe to my channel, I'll go ahead and put a link in the lower right hand corner of the screen. I've got a lot of subscribers lately and I really appreciate that. Um, and that's really been about it, folks. If you have any questions or any um, anything else you want to share, please put that in the uh, comment section. I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. 
And uh, until the next review, that's been about it. Again, this has been the Seiko SNA413 Flight Computer Watch. You can pick this up on Amazon for right around $200. Um, you can have them on some sites for about $190 or $189. But expect to pay about $200 bucks for this thing. So, And it comes in, I think it comes in another different face color. Actually, it does. It comes in gold, and I think it comes in black. Uh, and I'll put links to those in the description field if I can find them. So you can take a look at those. They're going to be about the same price. Between 200 you know, between 180 and 210 is about the average for this. So there you go. Again, this has been the Seiko SNA413 Flight Computer Watch. And until the next review, I will see you all later. Take care. Bye-bye.